At this point, we want to introduce an important idea that follows naturally from the overall ideal gas law. Remember we told you when we introduced the ideal gas law that the ideal gas law describes the behavior both of gas phase samples that are composed of a single gas phase chemical and also well describes the behavior of gas phase mixtures like air. The only thing you need to be able to describe use the ideal gas law to accurately describe the behavior of a gas phase mixture is to know the total number of moles of all the gases put together that constitute that mixture. Well, why does that work? The idea is that a gas exerts a pressure or a volume at a specific temperature, exerts a pressure or fills a volume at a specific temperature, not based on which chemical it is, but how much there is in terms of moles. And so the chemical identity of a gas doesn't matter if you want to predict its pressure or volume at a specific set of conditions, as long as it's not actively reacting with other chemical species, which would change the amount of the gas that you have. And this leads us into something very powerful. Because the pressure exerted by a gas in a container with a known volume and at a specific temperature depends only upon the amount, if you have a mixture of different gases, you can actually break down the pressure contributions from each individual gas and then add those pressures up to give you the overall pressure exerted by the mixture of gases. This is something that we'll do for air in a second. But for now, let's talk about it in terms of a generic mixture where we have two gases, A and B. We can say that the total pressure exerted by this mixture, even though there are two gas phase chemicals in it, is equal to the total number of moles, moles of A plus moles of B, times the gas constant R, times T, times V. And so we can actually separate that out. We can then separate the term for the total moles, N subscript total, to say, well, that is moles of A plus moles of B. And what that really means is, that we can actually assign a pressure to each gas in the mixture, a pressure due to gas A and a pressure due to gas B, based on the ideal gas law, where the pressure exerted by gas A, which we call the partial pressure of gas A, is equal to the moles of A times the gas constant times the temperature divided by the volume. This is the pressure exerted only by the molecules of A in the gas phase mixture. And we could do the same with B, where we could say the partial pressure of B, capital P, subscript little b, is equal to the moles of B times R times T times V. And what this means is every gas phase mixture has a partial pressure associated with each gas in the mixture. If you add up the partial pressures of all the gases in the mixture, you get the total pressure. If you know how many moles of a gas you have in the mixture, and you know the temperature and the volume, you can calculate its partial pressure through the ideal gas law. And this is known as Dalton's law of partial pressures. And it's a really valuable tool when dealing with mixtures of gases, because then we can talk about the relative amounts of each gas based on the number of moles of the gas, and we can break down their pressure contributions. You can think about this in kind of a diagram form where if you have a gas phase mixture composed of three arbitrary gases, we'll call them yellow, purple, and blue. If we put the yellow, purple, and blue gases together into a mixture, the total pressure of the yellow, purple, and blue gases combined is equal to the pressure due to each individual gas in a container of the same size. So if the blue dots exert a partial pressure of 300 kilopascals, the purple dots exert a pressure of 600 kilopascals, and the yellow dots exert a pressure of 450 kilopascals. If we put them all together in a container of the same volume, let's say it's 22 liters, we put them all together in a 22 liter container, then the pressure that the mixture exerts overall is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of each gas in the same size container and at the same temperature. So if we took our 22 liters of the blue dots, our 22 liters of the purple dots, our 22 liters of the yellow dots, and put them all in a single 22 liter container, the pressure 
of the mixture would be the sum of the partial pressures of each gas. So the pressure of the mixture would be 1350 kilopascals, and that would be equal to the sum of the blue, 300, plus the purple, 600, plus the yellow, 450. 300 plus 600 plus 450 gives us 1350 kilopascals. And so Dalton's law of partial pressure is hugely useful when you want to talk about the behavior of a mixture of gases. And that's particularly influential when you're talking about something like atmospheric chemistry, because as human beings or any organism living, breathing, and walking around on the surface of planet Earth, we live in air which is a mixture of gases. The principal component of air is nitrogen. That's not the most important component to us as human beings generally. We're interested in the second most abundant component, which is oxygen. And it's actually really important that oxygen is not the most, the most abundant component of our atmosphere. We just think about it the most because that's what we need in order to breathe. So what Dalton's law really says is that the sum of the individual partial pressures of each gas in a mixture is equal to the total pressure of the gas mixture, assuming the constant volume and temperature. Another way of writing this mathematically is that the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of the first gas plus the partial pressure of the second gas plus the partial pressure of the third gas, on and on forever, how many component gases you have in that mixture. The concentration of an individual gas in a mixture is typically expressed using a unit of concentration called a mole fraction, which is abbreviated with a capital X. Mole fraction is a particularly important concentration measurement for gas phase chemistry because, again, it, since gases can expand and contract with the volume of their surroundings, it makes more sense to talk about how much of a gas there is in terms of the moles of this gas compared to the total number of moles of gases. And this is what a mole fraction describes. So a mole fraction X is assigned to an individual chemical in a mixture and it's equal to the moles of that chemical you're interested in divided by the total moles in a mixture. So if we go back to our diagram where we have three gases, blue, purple, and yellow, we would use the mole fraction to talk about how much of the blue gas we had relative to all the gases put together. And if we wanted to assign a mole fraction X to the blue gas, we would say that the mole fraction is equal to the moles of blue divided by the moles of blue plus the moles of purple plus the moles of yellow, a mole fraction is just that simple. So you can talk about the mole fraction of any gas in a mixture simply by saying how many moles of the chemical that I'm interested in are there relative to the total number of moles that are in that mixture. We're going to take a look at Earth's atmosphere near the surface of the Earth to illustrate this concept. And we're going to talk about the mole fraction of each compound in air. So air is a mixture of quite a number of gases, but there are really only four that are present in air in significant abundance. You have nitrogen, which is the most common. You have oxygen, which is the second most common. Argon is actually the third most common, an unreactive noble gas that we don't think about that much. And then carbon dioxide is the fourth most common. Carbon dioxide is quite a bit lower in abundance than argon, oxygen, or nitrogen, but small changes in the amount of CO2 in the air can have big consequences for, for how the atmosphere helps the Earth store heat, because unlike the other three, CO2 is a greenhouse gas. How do we talk about how much of each gas we have? Well, if you just want to talk about percentage, you will be commonly told by atmospheric scientists, chemists, and physicists alike that nitrogen is 78% of the gas in the atmosphere, oxygen is 21% of the gas in the atmosphere, argon is slightly less than 1% of the atmosphere, and CO2 is currently a bit less than 0.04% of the atmosphere, but on the rise. When people talk about the percent of a gas in the atmosphere that you have, what they're really saying is they're making a statement about the mole fraction. If you were to take all the moles of nitrogen in the air and then divide it by the total number of moles present in a given volume of air, you would find that nitrogen, 
the moles of nitrogen divided by the total number of moles of air would be 0 0.7808, 78%. And so that 78% is actually a mole fraction measurement. 78% of the molecules of air in a given volume of space are nitrogen, and that's what a mole fraction expresses. So if you were to take all the mole, the mole fraction of nitrogen, add it to the mole fraction of oxygen in the air, add it to the mole fraction of argon in the air, and add it to the mole fraction of CO2 in the air, you would come close to totaling up to one, because these are far and away the four most abundant gases in our atmosphere. You could then calculate the partial pressure of any one of these gases by taking the mole fraction x and multiplying it by the total atmospheric pressure. So let's say you live near sea level. Let's say you're down in Seattle where the air pressure is going to be close to one atmosphere of barometric pressure. You could find the partial pressure of oxygen by simply taking the mole fraction of oxygen in the air. 0 0.2095 would be a typical value for the mole fraction of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere and multiplying it by one atmosphere of pressure. How much does the Ox how much pressure does the oxygen exert by itself? Nearly 0.21 atmospheres of pressure. Nitrogen by itself would exert a pressure of about 0.71 atmospheres, and argon would be close to exerting 0.01 atmospheres of pressure. This is what we mean by partial pressure. It's the pressure exerted by just one gas in a mixture of gases. You can always find the partial pressure of a single gas in a mixture of gases by taking the mole fraction of that gas and multiplying it by the total pressure that will give you the partial pressure of any gas in the mixture. So what we're going to go on here and do is look at how we can use Dalton's law of partial pressure to calculate the pressures of individual gases in a mixture both by summing up the total pressures both by summing up the partial pressures to give the total and to find the partial pressure of each gas by calculating the mole fraction and then multiplying the mole fraction times the total pressure to find the partial pressure.